Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about the Simpson Hybrid Hans system. This is a little bit different than a traditional Hans as it's designed to be worn with a shoulder lap belt like in a stock car, street car, versus a traditional Hans system which has slots for, for the full harness. Um, the parts up here, these are very nicely made. They're CNC, you know, solid billet um, connectors and these mount to the anchors on your SA helmet. In addition, it's got padding, it's got a nice carbon, exposed carbon fiber weave on the back. It is fairly lightweight. Um, again, it's not the lightest product on the market, but you know, if you're buying this and still running a street car, I think that the weight can't be as much of a concern. And the good part is that this system is sitting on your shoulders and it's not a weight completely on your head. So I've really liked this. I've been running this for HPDEs for a couple years now. It's a very easy to use system. You see it's got one latching point here. Again, it's very nice, anodized. Um, the straps are very comfortable, they're flexible. Um, the side ones are a little bit firmer, but it doesn't affect putting on the harness. And I can put this on with gloved fingers, which is a real key trait where I don't need to put this on before I put my gloves on. Let's talk about this hybrid. There has been a few areas of wear and we'll go ahead and look at this. If you can see on this rubberized plastic, there's a little bit of cracking. I don't think it affects performance. I've never had an issue with the seat belt catching on it, but the little bit of the rubber coating is starting to crack. And again, this is a section that's directly in the sun. It's being exposed to the elements, and I don't think it affects the application or the safety of using this product. Now, just another note, this hybrid was one of the first, if not the first model that Simpson came out. Since then, they've discontinued this and only the Hybrid S or Hybrid Pro are available. Again, uh, I paid around $1,000 for this one. I think that the current models provide additional updates and again, they're around that same price. Another great piece of equipment that a lot of first time track users start to look at is purchasing gloves. Now, these are a really critical piece of the puzzle because they're the only contact between yourself and the car, whether it's the steering wheel or the shifter. It's important that your hands aren't sweaty, they aren't slippery, and they're not gonna come off. So in, instead of looking at all of the expensive offerings from Alpine Stars or Sparco, I ended up picking up a set of used Army Navy. These are flight gloves. They're Nomex flight gloves. They're super pliable. They're 100% fireproof, and they can be had online for about $23. I actually have two pairs, and so this is a newer set that I've purchased. And you can see my last set, these lasted for a lot of track days and a lot of sweat, but they did get a lot of wear. But for $23, I'm happy to throw them away and buy new ones. Now, with these gloves on, it's very easy to put a helmet on, buckle the chin strap, and even fasten the Hans anchors to the helmet because these are there flexible. So next I'm gonna review a Bell helmet. This is the helmet that, again, I've had for a few years. It is one of the cheaper helmets for an automotive helmet. For many of my HPDE, I was just running a motorcycle helmet. I am a former motorcyclist, a current motorcyclist, but I always was running a nice uh, HJC Carbon AC12 model. And eventually I wanted to get the SA helmet, which there's a couple differences, one of which is has a smaller viewport. So compared to the motorcycle helmet, it has a narrower window for your field of view. Um, this is the, the Bell Vader. And you can see I've have a couple stickers. Another thing that I definitely recommend for anybody that's starting out at the track, even if you're just borrowing a helmet or paying for a rental or borrowing your friends, get a head sock. This is one of the best investments that I've made by far. I think it was $40. This is fireproof. It extends a little bit on the back of your neck. It gives you that sun protection. If you're in an open car, I'm in the S2000 with the top down a lot of times. It just gives you that extra bit of protection from the sun and I don't put sunscreen on very often. Uh, it has the benefit. It's washable. It's fireproof. This is really a great investment whether you're running your own helmet and you're sweating or if you're borrowing somebody else's sweaty helmet. A head sock is a great investment that you keep with you and it's not disposable. 
So now that we have the helmet, you can see it's got a standard D-ring operation. So this is a double D-ring. You loop it in here. And again, it's got a nice pull tab, which helps you distinguish the two D-rings. Let's see, there. And so you're able to, to grab it that way. Um, we'll take a closer look now. You can see the posts here. Um, these are the anchors that are pre-built in. Uh, on this particular helmet, I had to install them. It was, it was flush, but it comes with all the necessary hardware to install uh, the anchor posts. Um, you can see it also comes with the tool. This is the Bell tool kit um, and some extra spare parts in case you damage yours. And now I just wanted to finish up my long-term impressions with the Bell Vader. You know, I've had it for almost five years. It's It's been a fantastic helmet. I think that the interior has held up really well. I don't know if you can get a shot in the dark, but there's been minimal pilling on the interior fabric. I was doing about, or am currently doing about six track days a year. You know, some some years have been higher, some have been lower, but at least you know three or four a year. And so it's seen a lot of wear. A lot of weekends in Texas, we're very sweaty, uh, very warm days. You can get an idea of the fit. I'm not sure. It's very comfortable. The fabric is soft on the cheeks. There's still enough room to fit a microphone between your mouth and the guard. But overall, if you're looking for an entry-level motorsport helmet, this has really been a great investment for me. At this price point, you're really looking at entry-level. This is around $300. Uh, I think I paid $400 for it a few years ago. The weight is about three and a half pounds. And how this compares to some of the stylo or some of the other composite, it's only about half a pound heavier. And while ounces do matter, I think the stylo will be costing three times as much. So for comparably equipped helmets that weigh a quarter of a pound or half a pound less, you're gonna be paying three times as much. So 900 versus 300 or 400, you're gonna pay 1200. And again, that's gonna depend if you have air intakes, if you have built-in microphone or speakers, if you have a top intake, you may have a water. There's a lot of extra features that you can add in addition to the anchors. But for the money, and if you're just starting out, this is a great helmet to make that transition from a motorcycle helmet to a, a true motorsport helmet. First, if you're starting out, look at an option that is cost effective for the amount of track days that you do. I think that this package for me has worked really well. It's lasted at least five years, maybe two sets of gloves for five years, still $50. The helmet at three or $400 and the Hans right around a thousand. So if you are interested in more first time track gear or if you want more reviews, please hit that subscribe and we'll see you on the track.